The Fusion Nymph has become a staple in our box thanks to its simple instructions and versatility on the water. Here's how Larva Lace Materials makes it even better. I like to use a heavy wet fly hook for this fly. The Daiichi 1530 serves the purpose well. Since I'm tying PMD flavored fusion flies, I'm going with the black bead, but it's okay to mix up the color to fit the pattern of choice. Once you get the hook in the vise, start with a base of thread and bring your wraps back to the bend of the hook. The original fusion uses crystal flash for the tail, but angel hair is a great substitute and fits the bill for this fly. Take a small clump of pheasant tail angel hair and capture it on the back side of the hook. Secure the material down to the top of the hook shank all the way up to behind your bead. When tying materials, you want to consider a first on, last off approach. With that in mind, the next alteration we're going to make to the OG pattern is by using original larva lace midge lace as the segmented body. You'll lose a bit of weight in this by using midge lace over wire, but the final look and tying simplicity are hard to compete with. Grab the midge lace with your thread right behind the bead and pull your midge lace rearward as you make consecutive wraps to attach it to the top side of the hook. Tie down your midge lace all the way back to the original tie-in point, where we'll add the last needed body material in an ostrich hurl. Trim the end of the feather to ensure you get rid of any brittle portion of it, and then strip some of those feather fibers off, and tie the stem in on the back side of the hook. Bring your thread to the front of the fly before beginning to wrap your materials forward. Starting with your ostrich hurl, make consecutive wraps forward to about the three-quarter point on the hook shank. It doesn't matter how this hurl looks as you wrap it forward because it's only meant to be a buggy highlight to the body of the fly. Make two or three securing wraps at the front of the hook and then a few wraps in front of the materials just to lock it into place before you trim any excess hurl you have. Then it's time to bring the midge lace ahead in the same fashion. Touching forward wraps immediately over the hurl body until you get to the tie-in point at the front of the hook. You don't have to worry about wiggling this midge lace to get the hurl to shine through. Enough of it's going to poke through the seams to give you the look you want. Just make your consecutive wraps and try and get that segmented body with the midge lace. Capture the midge lace at the front of the hook and make a few securing wraps in front of the material before pulling the material up and trimming it close to the hook. Make a few cleanup wraps if necessary and then pull out six to eight inches of thread to create a dubbing loop for the one and only original Firestar dubbing. Add a bit of dubbing wax to the thread and just gently set some Peacock Firestar dubbing on the waxed area so that it stays in place. Then loop the thread around your finger and extend a little more from your bobbin to allow a few thread wraps over the top and around your new dubbing loop. You can use your fingers to spin this loop or your favorite dubbing loop tool. I use plunger style hacker pliers to grip the thread and then I twist those with my fingers to make a tight loop of squirrely Firestar dubbing. Begin wrapping the dubbing around the thorax until you sufficiently cover the area behind the bead. When you're satisfied, bring a few wraps of thread over the top of the dubbing loop and then in front just to lock it in. And then trim away any excess material you have. You may now whip finish and then trim that thread. This fly is great as it is, but it's okay to go in and trim some of the longer Firestar fibers just to clean up the fly a bit. Lick your fingers and wet the fly to see the real magic. It looks so good when wet. We're very grateful to Bob Reese for creating such a versatile pattern. It's great worked as an emerger off the back of a dry fly or as the lead fly in a deep nymph rig. These are the materials you need to tie Reese's Fusion Nymph with a larva lace twist. Head over to your favorite fly shop and ask for larva lace by name. Give Lori a call at the shop or find us on social media to order the best fly tying materials on the market. Then head over to our Facebook page and get signed up for our new On The Fly newsletter. Every month we'll feature stories, tips, tricks, and products from Larva Lace that will make you a better angler. Share your fly tying successes on the Fly Tying University Facebook page and then share your fishing stories at fishstories.org. Thanks for tying with Larva Lace. Have a great day.